Now a studio guest now, I'm going to try and get one on each week from now on. It's a man with quite a few fingers in quite a few boxing pies. And if we were going to devote a minute to all of his fighters, we'd be here until uh, Derek Chisora walks in the ring, really, against Vladimir Klitschko. That's assuming Vladimir Klitschko doesn't rip his rib away from his muscle. You can't, how can you invent injuries like that? You can't rip a rib away from its muscle, for God's sake. Anyway, the man in the studio has just done a deal in South Africa. He's got loads of other deals. I couldn't even begin to script how many deals he's got. It's Mickey Elliott. Mickey, how are you? Sorry for keeping you waiting, mate. Not a problem, It always, always gets a bit carried away. Good to be here. Yeah, Mickey, first of all, uh, how many how many fighters do you sort of work with or, or represent or... You know what I'm saying. Um, I don't actually know. Is <laughs> a truthful answer. I, I manage in the UK 42, which I think is more than anyone else does. Yeah, I'd say it's uh, if it's not more, it's got to be close to the bet to the total. I think yeah. There's uh, Errol Johnson in the Midlands, but he. I don't think he's got 42. With, no, and I think he, he works also with. Uh, PJ Rowson, who they sort of split their boxes oh, between gotcha. them. Yeah, so they sort so of classify. They, they count as, two as one them. team, but there's yeah, two yeah. teams. But uh, and what's the South African deal I read about? The South African deal. Uh, well, as your listeners may know, right, my my main business in boxing, I run the Mayfair Sporting Club, yeah. which is like a. Dinner. Is that still Cafe Royal? Uh, Cafe Royal's gone now. Oh, is it closed down? Oh, don't be, tell uh, me it's five years ago. That's how on the ball I am. Yeah, a couple of years ago. <laughs> hey, went, well done, buzzer. Bit the dust. But right, so that's where I mean I, I boxed for ten years. How I started in boxing. Yep. Uh, I then started training boxers. Got sick of being ripped off by managers. Started managing them as well. Yep. Got sick of being ripped off by promoters. So started promoting them as well. <laughs> <laughs> and that, that I came in at I was running at the Marriott and at Cafe Royal. Obviously, they had the National Sporting Club been running for years. Uh, they were having problems. You know, they're, they're not boxing people. They're hospitality people. Yep. They asked me, right, can you just come in? We want to do boxing. Every time we, we try and dip our toe, we get our fingers burnt. Yep. You're running literally next door to us, and it seems to be running well. Come down. So I went down there for, for one show. We agreed, all right, I'll come one show. And six years later, I was still there running these dinner shows, wow. which I love doing. And uh, just got, you know, uh, I mean, I, I knew I had a background in boxing. I boxed for sure, 10 years. Sure. You were talking about the novices earlier. I won yeah. the novices oh, uh, okay. a long time ago. And uh, I went to sort of uh i suppose it, I, I wanted to be a promoter and i thought this, this is something it's uh it's in, in london where i'm from i've got good contacts that sure. businesses and whatever and uh yeah it's gone it's gone well so how have you ended up with have you got the white buffalo now that's what I mean, we it, I'm, okay so i was coming buffalo? to that i was coming to that <laughs> eventually I, I realized right the money's in tv yeah in, in boxing yeah so my way to get into tv i speak french my dad's french uh, i speak french fluently Decent Spanish, Russian. I started bringing boxers from overseas. Okay. Uh, to say at the Sky Show, I mean, I've worked with every television promoter yeah. uh, that's here. So, I would say my 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 main business in boxing now, outside of the little shows that I promote to develop my guys, is bringing in the foreigners. Mm. For example, the the Sky Show that bit the dust recently, the the Haymaker Show. Yep. George Groves. George Groves was was right. against the Tony, a Betty Tony, yeah. in theory. So. When things are going pear shaped, when it's all going wrong, I'm the man they will call. Uh, to put people in the other corner. And exactly. Want of a better I, I've got exactly. So in the UK, I've got my forty boxers. Overseas, I've got. It changes every week, goes right. up and down. But I've got about four hundred guys that I'm their <laughs> exclusive agent for the UK or for Europe. I make it now for Europe because otherwise, I put them on in the UK. And the next week, I see they're boxing in France, That's Russia, no Italy. Well, this way, I, more money for me. Great. <laughs> well, if you bring in fighters from from Europe, uh, what is it? A day, two days? Well, let's say a fighter from um, Estonia. How 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 soon? Right. If they're in the fight? EU, how late can he come in? <clears throat> if they're from the EU, the yeah. latest I would bring them, um, it, definitely the day before. I okay. mean, you don't want to bring them too early because, for one, look, <laughs> if the guys come and win, that's mm. bad for me. The, yeah. the promoters don't want me to bring guys that come and win. They, they want, want you to bring guys that give them a little bit of a test. Exactly, that, that yeah. Don't they, fall over. Yeah, but it. look good. That's the problem with fat heavyweights we're getting from Eastern <coughs> Europe, Mickey. They don't look good. They might be good, but they look garbage. Um, I always try... I mean, the, the, the promoters will tell me. I always try and sound them out. What do you want? Well, yeah. they, they, Normally, they'll send me a DVD of the guy. They'll say, right, I want for this one... I want it to go at least minimum four rounds or four, whatever, you know... The, Get me a southpaw, get me a counter yeah, puncher. We want to try, and, but so so I bring them in anyway. So the the haymaker show starts going wrong, but they called me. I think it was the the day before they pulled the the show, 
saying we need a Commonwealth boxer, super middleweight. Um, and I was like, well, <laughs> the Commonwealth, I mean, these are the ones that are available. There was guys from Australia. I said, look, he's got to fly. If he gets on the plane now, which I had a boxer in Australia, he said, I will get on the plane now. But, but like, <laughs> it meant picking him up from the airport. When he's flying straight to your goal. Providing it hadn't been late, straight to the weigh in. Mm. And, I mean, yes, you, if you think you go to America, yeah, you can't do it, you yeah, can't next do it. time you go to America, yeah, yeah. think the next no, day that's, that's, you're there, that's, do that's I want to be? Yeah. yeah. So, anyway, one of the boxers, William Hare, South African chap, would take the fight, no problem, we'll, we'll, but not enough notice. So, then I thought, if, if I had something a bit more concrete with these guys, uh, yeah. you know, we, we could have saved this show. Salvage it, it definitely, if you'd yeah. had a bit more time. If I'd had a bit more time, yeah. So then I, I just thought, right, well, to, to just put it out there, I'm going to start signing more of them on these deals. Uh, the White Buffalo box Lennox Lewis. Yeah. He's one that, I mean, I, I've been asked quite a lot of time, and I, I provided opponents for Tyson Fury, for Larry Olabamuwu, uh, Derek Chisel, all, all the so of heavy yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The young, all our young guns. So the White Buffalo, uh, I put him, actually, I thought David Price. I thought he's perfect for David oh, yeah. Price. Uh, but Maloney didn't. Didn't fancy Frank, that. Didn't no no he didn't didn't he, he he sounded like he did at first and then when I said okay what's well, the done deal we, we, that's on no I don't, then so uh, you know what the but the Buffalo reminds me and he could be like years and years and years and years ago talk about in the thirties forties and fifties fighters from America mostly black fighters would suddenly box in Europe they box ten times here in two months or they'd go to Australia and buy and fight ten times in three months and. The, the buffalo could come over from South Africa. He could base himself here for a year, win a couple, and then lose a couple. He could have eight or nine, ten rounders, Mickey, and he'd do it, and he'd, and he'd become a star here with the way he looks. You know that, and the yeah, way he yeah, talks. Yeah. He could have him here and for a year. And he's he comes not, to fight. He's not, he's not a journeyman. And he, he hasn't got a journeyman exactly. mentality. So, he can, so he, even if he loses, it doesn't matter over six yeah, rounds, yeah, eight yeah. rounds, because you know, maybe those guys would be a bit too sharp for him. You know, maybe the, he needs 15, or he needs about 24 rounds of buffalo these days. The, the way that the, the TV boxing is developing now anyway is people are getting too I mean it was, it was still have the the you know you've got to develop boxes you can't pitch them in but if you look at it the way that it's going Sky are going more and more pay-per-view you know it went from one pay-per-view per year to twice a year mm. now we're going to be looking at one a month yep. you've got prime time you know these, these channels that are popping up yeah yeah paying only yeah. That, and yeah. I think to, to make those sell I mean look at the fights that are going on those the pay-per-view channels the little ones that pop up yeah they're 50 50 fights yeah, because yeah, people yeah. will pay to watch those they won't pay to, so i think buffalo that, that it makes sense you know yeah, to I, bring I, I, I agree i mean he's a character i mean the, the, the key is also at the moment is that it is that we get so many fights on tv compared to 20 years ago you can watch you can watch boxing all day and all night on different channels and it's people that don't mean anything even if they're in good fights and i think that the sport is certainly crying out for half characters which is why this people like Derek Chisora. character absolutely yeah. this man's a exactly. character and that's why they like chisora why do you think they like Derek chisora yeah, he's a yeah, talker yeah. he's a yeah. crank he's good fun we love him him a death yeah, yeah, you know yeah. we absolutely love him a death and the buffalo comes in he's a, he's a crank as well everyone would love him love him de love him a death so, so let's say any given weekend not right now because it's a slow let's say the middle of march how many of your boxers worldwide or british base would you think might box in march what sort what's what's the most what's the most amount of box you've ever had box in a month me uh i've never counted in a month i've had probably eight in a night uh on different different show. in fact no um, if it's if i have my own show yeah say or a show that i'm matchmaking i do a lot of matchmaking for promoters yeah i could have well 17 18 probably on one um, night on one big night somewhere. yeah 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 <laughs> well i could have my own ones on yeah, and yeah. i'll have other ones over of course, of course. On, or i've had maybe like four or five on four or five different shows so i have to try and orchestrate that mm. uh with you know different trainers taking them and well listen mickey can you keep us in the loop on the buffalo please yeah, yeah. Well, he, he want, he's desperate to come here. Well, he, he wants to, you know. Oh, I love it. the Buffalo. He, he had a restaurant in Las Vegas. I went and ate there once. It was great food. It was like sort of um, soul style food. Well, it was just mad food. It was like it was Buffalo ish, to be honest with you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, listen, Mickey, it's been a pleasure you coming in. Sorry we kept you waiting for so long. Not it's a been problem. a bit of a hectic night tonight, what with. Um, what with that happening with the with the heavyweights, which is just going to be ugly and recriminations and people screaming and people moaning. I think a little bit of less blame, a bit of blame has been shifted away from David A. Because you know, he was getting a lot of stick up until I, you know, I until think today, really. it, it might, in the long term, for British boxing, mm. I think it, it might be a good... I think, but my view of the fight, I think the Hayes are actually technically 
uh, sorry, the Klitschko is a technically better than hay, especially at, at heavyweight. Yeah, yeah. I think I, I would f lean their way, but I think as they get older, mm. even in terms of months and and time yeah, that yeah. hay is at heavyweight, I'd fancy I, I'd see it actually loading more in his favour. So I'm on I'm on your side there. And you know, you know, people moan and scream about this, that, and the other. But you know, if Hay had taken the fight against them in June of 2009, and I, know I keep saying it's like I'm like an old record. He would have got about a million. He had three options. If he takes the fight this September or even November, he ends up walking with 10, 15, 20 million and no options. How the hell can anybody in their right mind say he's done the wrong thing? Listen, yeah. Mickey, it's been an absolute pleasure getting you on and having you in. And thanks very much for coming in. Now.